वेलकम बैक टू अनदर वीडियो एवरी प्लांट गोज थ्रू डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ प्लांट प्रोसेसेस विच मेनली इफेक्ट्स ग्रोथ एंड डेवलपमेंट ऑफ ए प्लांट द फोटोसिंथेसिस प्रोसेस इज वेरी एसेंशियल पार्ट ऑफ ए प्लांट इट हैपेंड इन द ग्रीन प्लांट्स कंटेनिंग क्लोरोफिल इट ऑल्सो यूजेस वाटर कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड एंड सनलाइट टू मेक फूड इन द प्लांट लेटर्स डिस्कस दिस प्रोसेस इन डिटेल all living organisms so similarities in their activities and they all need food for two processes first is growth and second is energy based upon that they are categorized as autotrophs and heterotrophs what are autotrophs auto means self troph means nourishment so all green plants which can prepare their own food are called as autotrophs like that hetero means different troph means nourishment so all animals including human beings those depend upon the plants for their food are called as heterotrophs autotrophs can prepare their own food by a process which is known as photosynthesis how to derive the meaning from this term photo means light synthesis means manufacture so photosynthesis means manufacture of food in presence of light let us define the process photosynthesis is the process by which green plants use energy from sunlight to convert carbon dioxide and water into glucose in this process oxygen gas is released as a by product so here the operative words are green plants which contain chlorophyll sunlight carbon dioxide water glucose and oxygen let's know the raw materials required for photosynthesis first is water as we know the plants absorb water from the soil with the help of their root system and this absorb water is transported through the roots to the stem and then to the leaves let us study from this diagram this is the root system of the plant and this is the root hair and this into 1000 that indicates this figure is 1000 times magnified this is the root hair and these are the soil particles and the water which is available in between the soil particles that is only available to the root hairs for its conduction so water enters the root hair and then passes through the different cells and finally reaches the xylem xylem is present at the center which is known as the conducting vessel the upward arrow marks so the movement of water through the xylem from the root system to the stem and then to the leaves next is carbon dioxide the source of carbon dioxide is atmosphere so from the atmosphere carbon dioxide enters into the leaf cells through the stomata so the stomata are the tiny pores located the, mostly on the lower surface of the leaves then the radiant energy is available from the sun then chlorophyll this is the diagram of the chloroplast which is a cell organelle and it is present in the cytoplasm of the plant cells and the internal structure of the chloroplast shows the flattened sacs so the membrane of the flattened sacs contain chlorophyll pigments let us study the process of photosynthesis the energy from sunlight that is the radiant energy which is trapped by the chlorophyll so the green leaves which contain chlorophyll pigments and they trap the solar energy and carbon dioxide from the atmosphere which enters into the leaf cells whereas water from the soil that passes through the root hair and reaches to the cells of the leaves and carbon dioxide combined with water to form glucose that is the food for the plants in this process light energy is absorbed 
and change into chemical energy light energy means it is the energy from the sun and the chemical energy is the food energy that is glucose in the whole process oxygen is released as a by product let us study what happens to the by products and the end products the by product of photosynthesis is oxygen it is released through the stomata to the atmosphere it is of no use to carry out photosynthesis but it is essential to carry out respiration of all living organisms then the end product of photosynthesis first is the glucose it is formed by the process of photosynthesis and immediately after its formation it is converted into starch and that is stored in the leaves for the future use of the plants because the plants utilize starch as its food water which is produced during photosynthesis it may be utilized by the plants or it helps the plant to continue the process of photosynthesis so how to represent photosynthesis in the form of chemical equation the raw materials are carbon dioxide and water in presence of sunlight and chlorophyll the products are glucose water and oxygen so six molecules of carbon dioxide combines with 12 molecules of water in presence of sunlight and chlorophyll one molecule of glucose six molecules of water and six molecules of oxygen are produced this upward arrow mark indicates after the formation of oxygen it is released to the atmosphere as a by product now let's see the special features of leaves for photosynthesis this is the diagram of the leaf which contains the petiole the stalk of the leaf and this is the lamina and it contains the veins and the veinlets along with the midrib so the first point leaves are usually flat so that they are well exposed to sunlight so broader the leaf more reception of sunlight plants which live in shady places often have particularly big leaves the reason is if the size of the leaf is big it will acquire more sunlight from the other sources second point leaves are arranged in such a way that they do not cut off light from one another that means they are not overlapped third point leaves have plenty of veins containing vascular tissues so this is the midrib these are the veins and the veinlets and they are supplying water to each living cell that contains chlorophyll so that each living cell containing chlorophyll must be able to carry out the process of photosynthesis leaves have plenty of stomata in their lower surface what is the reason so that carbon dioxide easily diffuses in the leaves so this is all about this chapter this video in the next video we will discuss the working of the stomata thank you Thank you.